Hi, I'm Meng from Tokyo. In this video, I will show you 7 new updates and tips in Japan. This video will cover various topics such as Suica, PASMO, JR Pass, masks, and nuclear power plants. I would be happy to share your thoughts and impressions in the comment section. Okay then, let's go! Number 1. Wearing a mask because I'm speaking while wearing a mask in the video, some people have misunderstood that masks and COVID-19 vaccinations are mandatory in Japan. After May 8, 2023, COVID-19 restrictions have been relaxed, and the responsibility for implementing infection control measurement is now primarily left to individuals and businesses. Currently in Japan, the decision to wear masks is based on individual judgment, but there's still an impression that many people in rural areas continue to wear them. Whether or not to wear a mask is basically up to the individual. That's why I wear a mask when I speak on video. I'm often asked, why are you wearing a mask? I will share the reasons if I get more subscribers. So guys, please subscribe to my channel. Please remember not to force people to wear masks or take off their masks. Number 2. Shibuya Street No More Drink In Shibuya, there's concern about the deterioration of drinking etiquette following the relaxation of COVID-19 restrictions. Specifically, street drinking along with the associated littering and noise is considered a significant issue. The reason for the littering problem is the scarcity of trash cans in Japan. In 1995, a major terrorist attack involving starring gas occurred on the Tokyo subway, which led to the suspension of trash can installations for safety reasons. In response to declining manners, Shibuya World declared a zero-nuisance street drinking policy and began daily patrols in September of this year. Shibuya is known for attracting large crowds during Halloween. Just a few days ago, the world mayor started a conversation by issuing a strong message, don't come to Shibuya for Halloween. As a Japanese person, I believe that this might be a big missed opportunity. The influx of tourists to the area is expected to have a significant economic impact. If the issue is overcrowding at Shibuya Crossing, why not hosting more appealing events near Shibuya? This is my personal opinion. What do you think about this problem? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Number 3. Nuclear Concerns On August 24, 2023, Tepuko began discharging treated water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, which was damaged by the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake into the ocean. Some of you watching this video might be hearing about this for the first time, while many others may be concerned about the safety of Japanese marine products and wondering if there is a real issue. So what is the current response from the government and TEPCO? For instance, the Fishers Agency, a government agency currently inspects marine products every day using flatfish, a typical fish in the surrounding waters. They announce in both English and Japanese that there are no safety issues every day. TEPCO also publishes the inspection results in Japanese. TEPCO has also recently measured the tritium concentration, which is an indicator of safety and announced that it is below the level at which they have decided to halt the discharge. Furthermore, the government and TEPCO are organizing events in various locations as a countermeasure against harmful rumors. They are promoting sales and emphasizing the safety of marine products and other items by communicating the product's attractiveness. In fact, the University of Tokyo and Fukushima University conducted a survey of distributors in the fisheries industry. In the survey, 28.9% of respondents were opposed to the discharge into the sea, a significant decrease from 66.9% in the previous survey conducted in 2019. However, 60% of the distributors still feel that the explanation to the Japanese public is insufficient, which is still quite high. While we continue to consume seafood as usual, if you are concerned about the safety of seafood and other products during your trip to Japan, I recommend checking the website of the fisheries agency and the TEPCO to address any concerns about the safety of marine products. Number 4. 80 years old taxi driver Taxi shortage are currently a significant problem in Japan. There are instances where you have to wait for several tens of minutes even after booking a taxi. Despite the sharp increase in demand driven by the surge in foreign tourists following the COVID-19 pandemic, the supply side hasn't been able to keep up. The other day, I got some surprising and not so pleasant news. Until recently, taxi drivers are allowed to drive until the age of 75. 
But now, to address the shortage of drivers, the government decided to allow driving up to the age of 80 in designated depopulated areas. The root of this issue lies in Japan's regulation on ride-sharing. In Japan, the legal barriers for commercial transportation services are quite high and this is a major contributor to the driver shortage. In my opinion, I'd like to see the ban on ride-sharing lifted as soon as possible instead of relying on elderly drivers. I've used many ride-sharing services like Uber when I visited the US recently and they were very convenient and comfortable. I hope that in the future, more tourists can travel comfortably in Japan. Number 5. Welcome Suica Pasmo Passport I've received many questions about this in my previous video so let me update a bit and share it again. The sales of the Suica and Pasmo transportation IC cards have been discontinued for visitors. Instead, if you need one around Tokyo, you can purchase a Welcome Suica or a Pasmo Passport. The great thing about these cars is that they work almost everywhere in Japan including cities like Osaka and Kyoto. Welcome Suica and Pasmo Passport have pretty much the same functions, so you can choose either one. There are some minor differences but if you're only in Japan for a short time, just keep in mind that they are issued by different companies and have different designs. One important thing to note is that Welcome Suica and Pasmo Passport can only be used for 28 days unlike the regular Suica and Pasmo. Another thing to keep in mind is that the balance on these cars is not refundable. But don't worry, both Welcome Suica and Pasmo Passport can be used at convenience stores and vending machines. So you can use the remaining balance to treat yourself to some drinks and snacks. Number 6. Mobile Suica, Mobile Pasmo In addition to Welcome Suica and Pasmo Passport, there are other smartphone versions of IC cards namely Mobile Suica and Mobile Pasmo. These are well known for the convenience and they make it easy to recharge your card and reduce the amount of physical luggage you need to carry. Unfortunately, at the moment, Mobile Suica and Mobile Pasmo are only available in Japanese. But if you have an iPhone, there's no need to be disappointed. Thanks to the Apple Wallet app included in iOS, you can use mobile IC cards in various languages even without registering them. Recharging your card is quite simple and you can do it with credit or debit card payments. When you are ready to use your card, simply touch your phone to the ticket gate and you will be able to pass through just like with a physical IC card. Number 7. Japan Rail Pass Final Call Many of you are probably familiar with the Japan Rail Pass, also known as JR Pass. It's a pass jointly offered by the six companies of the JR Group and is a convenient and budget-friendly ticket for traveling by train and shinkansen throughout Japan. You might have heard that the price of this pass is going up on October 1st, 2023. But for those of you planning to buy a JR Pass and traveling to Japan by December 29, 2023, there's some good news. If you purchase it by September 30th, you can still get it at the current lower price. The only thing to keep in mind is that you must redeem your JR Pass within 90 days of purchase. So, if you buy a JR Pass online or a local agent on September 30th this year, you will need to redeem it in Japan by December 29, 2023. In my previous video, I've explained about the JR Pass for beginners. If you're interested, please check them later. How was the new update? Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like button. See you at the next video!